And welcome to the Codex Cantina, where I am Una. And I'm Scared Crypto! Ooh, spooky October! What are you dressing up this year? Uh, I don't actually haven't decided yet. We're going to be actually <gasps> traveling to a cabin in the woods to make things scary as balls for Halloween. Oh, you could dress up as anything in Cabin in the Woods. You could do Pre- pretty much. anything. Oof. Pretty much. I'm probably going to bring my Captain America sweatshirt, a quick quick hood, and then my, my Captain America shield for a quick thing to do. We just don't know what to do about our son. He's If you didn't know, if you're new here, my son is five years old. We don't know what Halloween's going to look like for a pandemic quarantine type situation. Most places have uh, said that you're not allowed to go out and trick or treat. My wife and I talked about just dressing up and then just making him go to different rooms. And then we like jump out with a different costume. <laughs> <laughs> you could hide candy kind of like easter eggs or something that could be fun oh that's a good idea he would like that yeah he he's actually very interesting because this past year for easter my wife went outside and my son's like is mommy hiding candy and i was like what are you talking about <laughs> he's like mommy's he's, the East, he's like mommy's the easter bunny i'm like oh. no she's not <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's what does he want to dress up as He's an interesting child. He's going as a pirate this year. Actually, I have a a picture of him in his pirate outfit. He is about 10 times as adorable as anything I could imagine. So I'll put a picture up there to to do more justice to his description than I could. That kid is a cute kid. Good look thing. He looks like his mother. (laughs) No kidding. But hey, he's got my dimples. He's got my dimples. (laughs) All right. So Uh, October TBR, what on earth are we doing? We are not doing a month of scary stuff. It would just be too much for me. I can't do it. But we got a couple of things planned here. So first off, National Hispanic Heritage Month starts September 15th, ends October 15th. So we are carrying forward doing a short story from the Latin American culture each month. This month, we have our two final ones of the five short stories. We have Luisa Mercedes Levinson's the Clearing, translated by Sarah Avrio, also called the the co- the Cove, I believe. You almost rolled your R there. I, I did. I got to be careful. I know <laughs> you're gonna correct me on the rolling the R. We're really Arrival. bad at it. We're bad at pronouncing any names. So I apologize. Yeah, we're terrible. We have Maria Luisa Bombal, the Tree, also known as El Arbol, which is translated by Richard and Lucia Cunningham. I'm interested to see what that one's about. I mean, I, I really am. Do you think it's about a tree? I bet it's not. <laughs> I feel like the tree's gonna be like, like you know, the giving tree. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like he gave and that, gave. And like that was my uh, favorite story as a kid. I, I want to know what the what the the Maria Luisa Bombal's got for us on that story. Like I just well, if you wait and stick around, you will. I know. I'm looking forward to that one. All right, up next we have the story of your life by Ted Chang, which is the short story that became the 2016 hit movie Arrival. That one's got tons of awards. Most people have probably uh, seen the movie or read that one. So. Dude, that was like my favorite movie when it came out. Like that. Oh, yeah. That, that movie's is, fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, one. it's one of those where it's hard to pick which is better, the movie or the story, which is very rare, super rare. Like you, you never get a story and a movie that are that in sync together. And I am a big fat liar. Because I kept saying that the shingles for the Lord, I kept, well, technically I said wrapping up the program. I, I realized we have one more William Faulkner story for our Faulkner certificate program. And then you will be taking your test. So you better, <sighs> you Study. realize, you know what we're doing. You know I'm going to record that live. Like I'm going to give you the test. I'm going to proctor the test to you live. And everyone in the world's going to see if you actually are prepared for this. Yeah, that's scary. Got to bring my A game. We have Spotted Horses by William Faulkner this month, which is our last one in the Faulkner Certificate program. Maybe I'll uh, cheat. <laughs> you cheat on everything, that's for sure. Now, the question I is, will not. that will that cheating actually get you better scores? Because I'm proctoring it. I ain't going to let you look stuff up live. Hold on a second. What's that keyboard noise? <laughs> Nothing. All right, next we have Ivan the Fool by Leo Tolstoy, translated by the, the mods... This is going to be a part of our Tolstoy triggered project along with Noah. And we got to be close to our last one there, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I mean, October, we, we've got yeah. a November one, and then December is a, a Christmas story. Stay tuned for our December announcement. We're actually very excited for what's going to happen this December. 
Yeah, we're getting close to the end of old Tolstoy. That's sad. Breaks my heart a little bit. But we've got some awesome authors, I think, to replace him. We're, so. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna figure out what's our next next year twenty twenty one goals, because twenty twenty was was a jerk to us. We, we loved our readings, but the actual year of what's been happening <laughs> this year, oh, brutal. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to find some other sucker, or maybe Noah will stick around. <laughs> All right, next up we have The Pedestrian by Ray Bradbury. By Ray Ray. This is, this is one of his most popular, right? I've been told this is his most popular, but I'm like, no, isn't his most popular The um, the Sound and the Fury? But but even then, when, when I look on our, our statistics, The Sound and the Fury isn't his most popular video of ours, but that might be because we sucked at it. I don't know. <laughs> People seem to like The Velt better. Who knows? The, the Sound and the Fury... Or what did Isn't I call that it? Faulkner? Uh, uh, sound of Thunder. Sound, S- a sound, sound of, of thunder. thunder? A Sound of Thunder. Sorry. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. I'm very confused. See? I passed my test. Woohoo! I know the Ooh. names of stories. Mm-mm-mm-mm. All right. Up next, <laughs> A Man Who Was Almost a Man by Richard Wright. Wright frequently wrote about racism. So we got to make sure that we have a racist topic every month. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> no, no, no. We want a racial issue story each month. <laughs> Sorry, yes. All right. Our next four are actually all our Halloween related reads. So I did sneak some in here. Now, with that said, only one for you and three for me. None for you, Gretchen Wieners. Okay. Up first, we have The Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. Have you read this one? Actually, I've never read it with old Ichabod. I've seen the Disney cartoon, but I mean, hasn't everyone? I've never read it myself. Yeah, I've seen the Disney cartoon. I think there's the Charlie Brown version. There's the Johnny Depp yeah. version. There, yeah. yeah, but I've actually never read the story. I haven't either. So this will be fun. This is just for fun. We'll do. We'll see if we can do some analysis on it. See what we do. But um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Now, the next three are just for me. Unfortunately, as much as I love you, you don't seem to love the options i give you for manga now what i'm doing is manga mornings with leslie if you are unfamiliar with leslie from the nerdy narrative i am very disappointed in you she is probably the best thing to happen to youtube go check out her channel we are finishing up our one piece up through issue 70 we're going to do at least 47 through 70 we'll probably be further along than 47 once we start this month by echiro oda and Leslie, uh, is this is her first time going through One Piece, and this is kind of my second-ish time, depending on the arc. What would a TBR be without me interrupting myself, I guess? A quick announcement. Leslie and I are actually going to do a very fun announcement on her channel for One Piece, since her channel is going to be more appropriate for comic reviews and stuff more so than here. We kind of did a quick collaboration and fun couple different games. Round one, fight! Tony Tony Chopper! Tony Tony Chopper! Tony Tony Chopper! Gum gum no pistol! <laughs> gum gum no pistol! Gum gum no pistol! <laughs> oh my gosh, how do you do this one? Kala- Ka- Kara? Kala- is it Kaha? Okay. English. Kala- so if you're interested in some fun like this, definitely check out Leslie's channel. But we will wrap up right before the Dressarosa arc, but this is the Thriller Bark arc. So this is going to introduce us into Halloween along with the island of zombies on One Piece. Very excited for that. Cool. Me too. Now the next two on the list are both from our friend Sui Ushida. Now, he wrote Tokyo Ghoul, which is only 14 volumes, volume 1 through 14, and Tokyo Ghoul Re, which is like the follow-up 1 through 16, which I've heard isn't as good. We'll see. Now, I've read Tokyo... Go ahead. You've read this because you told me about it before. I've read Tokyo Ghoul. I tried to get you to read Tokyo Ghoul, but you will not read comic books for some reason. I've watched the anime. You watched the anime for this? Yeah. And remember, we talked about the differences. We did? Yeah, how they change uh, oh. uh, some of the story and his motivations and stuff. Well, this one is very interesting because it involves bits. Because what is what is this? What are we reading? What 
One Piece is if you haven't if you haven't been following One Piece, first of all, I totally skipped over that. Is a pirate fantasy adventure. Now for Tokyo Ghoul, this is a really interesting. It's it's a a, a, a what do they call it? Low fantasy. It's our world, but basically ghouls live in it. They look like humans, but they have these powers, these unique things, and they feed upon humans, if you will. It's vampires dressed up as ghouls. It is very interesting the way that they approach things. That uh, I I I. I the first 14 issues of Tokyo Ghoul have a lot of tarot card references in terms of the Hanged Man story plot line. Very, very interesting. I'm, I'm not an expert on it, but I'll enjoy it and I'll mention it in our wrap-ups what my opinions are. Now, this will be my first time through Re, which is his follow-up, which I've heard went downhill very fast. We'll see. We'll see what my opinion is of this. But with ghouls dressing up as humans, feeding upon humans, it's gory, it's mature, it's very appropriate for Halloween. Cool. Now, in terms of novels that uh, Crypto will read with me, first, oh, man, breaking my heart. First up, we have the hashtag Dost CP twenty twenty. What is what is that? Well, Dost stands for Dostoevsky, and CP stands for Crime and Punishment. We are reading Crime and Punishment along with a very lovely group to uh, break down one of Russia's most famous authors. We'll see what we do with that one. I know I want to do a before video, and I know I want to. I, I already know a couple angles I want to do because this will be my second pass through. I believe this is your first pass through. Is that correct? My first pass through. Yeah, yeah. And what yeah. do you think I mean, crime? But, what do you think crime and punishment is a reference to? Uh, a crime, and a dude getting punished. Okay. <laughs> it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think. I think, it, I think it's pretty literal here. I think people be surprised what the punishment is. I think people will be surprised how approachable Dostoevsky is. He's a very easy author to read. I'm not a master of him. I've only read For Pleasure, Crime and Punishment. I've read For Pleasure, The Brothers Karamazov. But uh, this time we're going to go through a little bit more analytical than the first time. And I'll actually start organizing my notes and we'll have kind of a breakdown of that. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, that's one of the most famous books of all time, right? I mean, oh, it's yeah. up there with oh, yeah. the Bible and War and Peace. And <laughs> well, with that said, there's there's going to be some warnings about you that Dostoevsky isn't exactly a perfect person, right? He did have prejudices. He did write negatively about the Jewish culture in it a little bit, more so in Karamazov. But I do want to call that out that there are prejudices that will come out in that book if you haven't read it before. It's not a major point, but it's there. And I think it's appropriate for you people to know in terms of trigger warnings what you're getting into. Well, anytime you read something from the past, you have to take off your rose-colored glasses that we wear in 2020. Being able to dissect literature to see these prejudices is very is an important skill to learn, too, in my opinion, because you will see that in real life. And I think it's important, too, because it can be a teachable moment of, well, why does he say that? What is right. the reference to that? Right. And then go into the history of it as well. So you right. can get a little bit more understanding of why he might use those stereotypic tropes. Right. Maybe maybe we'll go... See, it's not heavy in this book. It's there. I mean, I definitely remember it in part one. But uh, it's not as heavy in this book, I think, as Karamazov, if I remember correctly. But... Um, we'll, 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 figure out, we'll figure out how to break that one down. Um, that'll be an interesting one. Cool. Up next, we have The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Now, this one we won't do... It, we, we've been reading this one. I've been reading it for longer than Crypto has. He he was smart enough to finish it before school started. I was not. So You're still now, reading, right? It's been three years. You're still reading it? We're on year three <laughs> of me reading The Way of Kings. But I am finally wrapping this up. We can't thank Michael Nip enough and the whole host group of Storm Along 2020 for allowing us to participate in this. If you didn't know what Storm Along 2020 is, Brandon Sanderson's releasing his fourth book in the Stormlight Archives, and they are rereading the first three leading up to it, which is interesting because I think by the time the 10th book up, they'll have to start two years in advance to catch up and read all nine books before. But uh, we will start. 20 years ago <laughs> I, I i will i'm i'm a very slow reader compared to most people but with that said we are going to have some fun with that we talked in advance like hey are we going to do our analytical literature breakdowns no no we're just gonna nah. we're gonna we're gonna do four or five beer una and crypto for that one i think i think it'll be better too because that's not something that lends itself well to our heavy analytical critique and i think it's a book that is meant to be more enjoyment based anyway yeah it's clearly 
it would fail so hard if we were to try to apply the critic, literary critique. And, and, and the fans of it, that's not what they want, right? We see that kind yeah. of with, with, with Stephen King. There's some that want it, but for the most part, they just want to have a good time. So we're learning, too, about ourselves that fantasy fans, that's not what they want. So let's not do that. So yeah, it's brain candy. So let's en- enjoy the candy. Yeah. Up next, we have Slaughterhouse Five, the graphic novel. Originally, the story by Kurt Vonnegut, reimagined as a graphic novel by Ryan North, uh, and I forget the artist's name. I'll put that in the. I'll put that somewhere on the screen. Ooh. Ooh. Now, Crypto here was supposed to pre-order it, and we are here days later after its release. And, and have you ordered it yet? Do you, do you want me to order it right now? I'll go on my phone literally. Right yeah, now. I actually do. Okay. I don't understand why. I'll do it why live, you, I'll do it live under, on the video. You keep I don't talking. understand. Okay, I'm going to keep talking. I don't understand what on earth you were doing with not having pre ordered that. You claim it's a mistake. I claim it's a pattern. <laughs> a pattern? What other story or book have I not ever. So um, you failed to order Thrawn, and I had to remind you. You said, oh, what? I thought I had pre ordered that, and then you went and reordered it. Do I need to pull the text conversation? Don't. Yes. Don't. Who is the schedule master of this channel? Mrs. Una. <laughs> She tells us when we can record. Okay, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I, I am at the shackles of Miss Una. Now, now let's move on to our last novel of the month that we are going to try to squeeze in. It may bleed over into November. And that is the Wolves. I think it's of the Kala. Kala? Kala? How do you, how do you say that word? Wolves of Kala? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to try and yeah. squeeze that in by Stephen King. And again, just kind of like how we learned with how the, the previous four novels have been, we've learned people don't want three, four, five videos on these Stephen King novels. I think they just want one. And I think they want more fun. And I think they just want us to enjoy it and kind of share in that enjoyment. We'll still do some analytical breakdown, but I'm gathering that people don't want us to go into heavy detail on some of these fantasy stories. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. You guys can tell me differently if you want, but that's kind of what I'm seeing based on. Um, we have a problem. What? It says it's not going to be delivered until October 13th. <laughs> I think it's backlogged because <laughs> I think it's out. <laughs> Well, you can order it digitally, I, and you're going to have to read it digitally. I, I'm laughing because I don't want to cry. That breaks this, my heart. I work so hard to schedule I know. things out. I am I a terrible person so and friend. so hard on this. And this is how you're I don't understand. I could have swore I ordered it. I work so hard for you. And this I is know. What, this is how I get repaid. You are the better friend. It would be cheaper, actually, for me at this point just to ship it to you, and then you ship it back. <laughs> It would. It would be less than $22. So we plan to read Slaughterhouse 5. <laughs> Whether Crypto ever gets there is the next question. Well, if I get to the 13th, I can, uh, I'm can. i supposed to have the 14th off, remember? I could sit around on the 14th and read it that day because I oh, won't be but, doing anything that day. But now I have to refigure out the schedule for recording. Luke, uh, sorry. <laughs> Move your vacation. Uh, channel okay. takes priority oh yeah Our that's a good point we, did, we, didn't bring, we didn't bring that up i think in this video is that i'm going on vacation this month so one of the months um one of the weeks either i will be in the smoky mountains in a cabin i don't know if i'll have internet i don't know if my phone will work or we'll just wait and do the video later that week but there may be a week of kind of awkwardness for our recording bing ding 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 all right. Well, that is what our reads are. Are we have a very ambitious October. We clearly need to make sure that we have everything lined up and ready. We don't want to accidentally not order something and have it be on back order for a month later. That would be an absolutely horrible thing to do to our recording partner. <laughs> Man, you just rubbing it in the wound. I do. Man. I do. Salt. I'm just. Putting the salt on it. Putting a shout. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you feel bad? Do you feel embarrassed? I do. Humble. I feel horrible. I'm sweating right now. I broke out in a flop sweat. See, you know what it is? Is I wanted you to feel bad, but as soon as you told me you feel bad, now I feel guilty. <laughs> I do feel bad. <laughs> I, got, what, what it, I thought it said one to two day delivery, and then it says delivery date October 13th. I'm like, oh, bleep. 
Well, you can order it digitally and do the digital version of it. Nine. Nine, 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 nine. All right, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you enjoyed our TBR. Let us know what you are most interested, interested, most interested. You didn't get my joke there. I did a German joke and you didn't even get yeah, it. Slaughterhouse I, Five. I, Slaughterhouse Five, nine. Like, like you would know. You haven't even read it. Oh, I, I, mm, I'm going to read it October 14th. <laughs> can't wait for like three weeks from now <laughs> four weeks <laughs> month if, if only we had pre-ordered uh, it <sighs> shut up and this all thing. right thank We're you so here. much for checking us out please consider hitting that subscribe button to join us on some of these reads look forward to hearing from you guys una out peace